Well, it's the moment of truth. We get to see how the girls got on. These are the little boxes we put our queen cells in. Now, if you don't know, a poor little queen, she once gets raised out of a cell. The ladies give her some food. She goes through some adolescence for about a week or so. So she has to orientate herself outside of the hive for a little bit and then go for a bit of a flight, find some drone mating sites, get mated and make it all back here safely without getting eaten by a magpie or a dragonfly or hell, anybody else that wants to eat a queen bee. I guess she'd be a tasty treat on the way around, wouldn't she? It wasn't always known that the queen had to actually go for a flight to actually get mated. In the original, like back, I don't know, back before research into bees, they actually thought it all happened inside the hive. So, you know what, she's a brave chick and we're about to find out who came back alive and who didn't. And if you're wondering why the clarity of this show just kicked up a gear, the lad's got himself a 4K camera that we can all keep up with technology. Thank you to all you Patreon supporters that are giving us a kick along. And if you're enjoying the show, consider giving us a helping hand so we can actually make it better and stay up with technology. Because you wouldn't believe if you don't keep up with technology, next thing you know, you can't transmit. Rightio, oh, so now we get to see how the little virgins got on. Little darlings they are. If you're wondering why I've got a pink bee smoker, the lovely wife has got a pink bee suit, pink boots. She hasn't got any pink gloves, which she's very annoyed about. And she bought a pink bee smoker to go with the whole aesthetics of everything. But who do you think stole the bloody thing? <laughs> I'm out here on the farm and I'm thinking, shit, where the hell did I leave my smokers? And I went over to the truck and I found the wife's lovely pink smoker, which actually works quite well. So I'm thinking about keeping it. Do you reckon she'd notice if I painted this black instead of pink? I think that's what would happen. Okay, a little bit of a puff in the front door. Just undo our little latches. Let's have a look what's going on. Look at that. That's a hive mat that doesn't let anybody get out. <laughs> I hope there's someone underneath here. Oh, yes there is. They're coming out to say hello. Hello, chicks. Now just remember, at this point, these bees are technically not the progeny of the new queen because she's only, well, if she is in here somewhere, She'd only just be starting to lay, so I don't think any of hers would have hatched yet. So these are still your original bees that you've actually started this split with. So they still might be a little bit, so don't, so don't judge her on those characters is what I'm trying to get at. We'll just slide across here. Where we got a spot somewhere? Just pop this frame out of there out so we got some room. Just be extra cautious that there's nobody on that frame that you put out there. They're getting excited to see us. They're saying, hello, Mr. Bush Bee Man. We're doing very well without your interference. But they don't know that they're only here because of my interference. Oh, that's the honey frame we put in to give them something to eat. It's they're all happily nibbling on or filling back up. Oh, don't hook myself with that. That would be good. Okay. For the moment of truth, ladies and gentlemen, is there any eggs? Oh, and there is. Hallelujah. Look at that. Oh, my Lord. Now, that's a nice pattern. It's not so good this side, but the other side's amazing. Look at that. Woo, here's our little queen cell that we popped in there. I wonder if we can find the captain. Let's see if he's on the next one. Cool, so there's a nice young laid up there. That's beautiful, that's new, nice new stuff. Oh, look at that, here's even the boss. She looks pretty. Good girl, she's laid this up nice too. Oh, yeah, that's always a good sign. See your little virgin made it back home safe and sound. Doing the right thing. Here she goes for a bit of a run. <laughs> She's at the bottom, hang on a minute. I'll just get her to run up the top a bit. There we go. The last thing you want to do after all your hard work is to lose your queen. Because she's been through a fair ordeal. Like I said, she's got to get out of the cell. She's got to grow up a little bit. She usually flies out the front here a little bit and figures out where she is. And then she's got to fly away for, I don't know, somewhere between three to five Ks and find some boys have a bit of fun in the park, and then make it all the way back home safe. And then the real work begins for her. She's gonna have to lay eggs flat out for a couple of years, create me some beautiful bees, and create you some beautiful honey to have. Ha, how good is that? And if you wanna try some of the honey, we've got it available on our website. Just go over there, order some honey, order some of my lovely wife's products. Gosh, help us kick this show along. And we'll just slide everybody back nice and gentle, because I think that's good. So that's one to be taking with us. 
In the beekeeping world, there's much conversation about breeding queens and getting all enthusiastic and all the rest of it. And you're not supposed to have your breeders in a straight line, but I had a bit of a problem because there's actually a track here where the fuel truck needs to get out on. So I thought, I reckon I'd be better off to have them in a line where they don't get run over than actually have them run over. So that was the payoff. So if you're actually doing this and you've got plenty of space, you can put your bees a bit more randomly and hopefully the queens will make their way back and not get lost. Because I mean, if that, if the wrong queen goes in the wrong box and then another queen comes home, then they'll have a box on and you don't want that. So just to let you know, this is technically not ideal to be in a straight line. All you people that are out there in beekeeping land that are going to email me and say, on oh, such and such a show, this isn't what's done. But you know what? The cool thing about being your own boss, if you weren't here on the video watching this shit, you would never know. So just chill out. How's the playing card system going, Dad? Well, it got superseded by a bit more advanced system with electronics. The wife decided to come along. She's got a little tablet, and so we updated a little bit, and apparently that system can print its own cards, so we didn't need them. But here at the Bush Bee Man Show, I'm never one to waste an opportunity, so I was fossicking through the shed the other day, and I saw these playing cards that the wife had spent a bloody couple of days laminating and getting organised. And I even found the book with the original little write-up charts in there and what was what, and that's not even relevant anymore. But I did think to myself, what a golden opportunity, because what happens when the girls actually, when the queen goes out, she needs to know that this, when she does an orientation flight, she'll fly around out here and she'll have a look at the front of the hive and she'll think, yep, that's where I've got to go back to, and she'll see that's relative to that tree and that bit of wood and leaf and yada yada. And then when she flies off and is gone for a couple of hours and she comes back and she can say, I'm the Jack of Hearts Queen, because I'm going to go in here. And then that was my plan for the card. And if you have a look at this side, we've got the King of Diamonds Queen the other side. So anyway, it must work because they both got home safe. <clears throat> so this is a double-ended box that we made up and we've got a, we'll pop the lid off and hopefully we've got a couple of girls in here living happily. I'll just get a little bit of smoke. I've got my hive mat perfectly fit in here so that they can't run up and across the frames. Because obviously, if you have two queens in the one box, one queen that's the best fighter is going to win, and then you'll have only one queen. So we're wanting to keep two queens alive. So we've got an entrance at either angle, so we've got a king and a jack. Ah! Why a bloke didn't have a queen, I don't know, on a queen hive, but you know, you can't have everything. So we're just going to pop our mat off, which technically isn't a mat, but it's anyway, it doesn't really matter. Something to keep the lid on. And the girls have all said, what's going on? If you're wondering how a bloke made the divider board, I'm not going to pull it out, so you'll have to tune in next week and check out what we actually did. But just today, we're going to have a look what the Queen's doing. Oh, there we go. Someone's in here laying. She's got a nice little pattern. Got a little bit of chalk brood left over from before. Even got a couple of drones running around in here. Gah. They're opportunistic, aren't they, them boys? <laughs> see if we can't find her. It doesn't really matter if we don't see her, as long as we see that she's working. They're not real happy to see us. Because they're busy, busy, busy trying to build a new life and they're like, oh, piss off. Yes, silly humans, leave us alone. We know what we're doing. Just let us get on with our work. All right, and we'll have a look. Hopefully there's some on the other side. What are we doing, chicks? Just chilling out, staying in the box would be good. Nobody running across the top. That'd suck if the queen decided to run into the next door neighbors while we're doing this bit. Yeah, wouldn't that be great? That'd really defeat the purpose. <laughs> Hopefully she's hiding from us. There we go, ladies. It's just honey, so it's not going to be on that, I wouldn't have thought. Oh, that looks pretty good. So we've got one this side too. So oh, that's cool. So they've managed to make their way home. Maybe the card is a good idea. This is a much better pattern. I was just thinking, if you got really motivated, you could probably pluck that queen cell out of there and use it again. Uh, but we're not doing that today. They're not that expensive. It is a good idea though to have the queen cells a bit polished before you actually try to 
put your graft in, but you would have seen that in the earlier episodes. So we're gonna put these ladies back together, leave them here, leave them alone for a minute, and then we've just gotta go and set ourselves up, because these girls are gonna get moved to a spot just for themselves. The plan is that we're gonna have all of these grass, which is all the same queen at one site, and then I've got a few other sites where I'm gonna have just the, that particular run of queen running in that area, and then when we want to go there, we want to say, right, we're going to get some extent, well, I don't know. I call these bees the round bottom gals because they're, when she breeds, she breeds beautiful and the bees got a nice little curved tail. And then my wife's got the backyard bees and they're going to a different spot. And then I've got, I don't know, about five other genetic lines that I'm playing around with that I'm deciding which ones to keep and which ones to use. And so I'm going to have around Loxton, I'm going to have like, say, 20 hives in a little apiary and then that's going to be where we keep our breeding stock. And then obviously going forward, we'll have to get another spot for a queen mating site. But ah, one thing at a time. This is probably one of those moments I'll regret because I'm just thinking to myself, there's only 10 little boxes. And maybe if I just put some paper in the front, I won't have to actually put a suit on. So anyway, I thought, what the hell, I'll have a go. So I see all my American brothers out there, they are out there working in their bee bloody yards without a suit on. So, hell, you know what? Let's have a go. Take one for the team, John said. Yeah, nice bloke he is. I'm gonna give him the paper. What he doesn't know is he get to move the box as well. <laughs> anyway, if you see me sitting in the ute very shortly, you'll know I've been attacked. Bloke could have brought a bit more water too. <laughs> a little bit of wet newspaper for the front. All the girls are in bed. Well, I think they're in bed. <laughs> hello. Actually, hopefully it's not hello. I <laughs> don't want to see anybody in reality. <laughs> oh, John, you're such a big meaty bum. I had an email from a fan today and he was wondering how he could actually just support the show without actually becoming a Patreon supporter. Well, I'm gonna try and explain this, it's very confusing, but apparently if you go to the channel page, if you're not in the channel page, I don't know how you're watching us, but if you go to the channel page, in the top corner, there's a PayPal button that you can click and flick over whatever you, well, I shouldn't say whatever you think I'm worth because it's actually what my son's worth because I'm probably not worth fuck all. <laughs> don't do this if you've got a very hectic full bee box either. These are just random because these are little tiny little nuke boxes and there's not a lot of people home and they're all in there trying to keep warm. So they're just gonna not know we're even here. Anyway, on a serious note, if you're in your actual little breeding apiary and you're going through the boxes and you come across a little nuke colony that actually is pretty angry and a little bit distraught, which was what happened over here, they probably haven't got a queen because when they've got a queen, they're busy raising babies and getting nectar and getting pollen and doing all the things that bees do. When they're just doing their own thing, they're not busy raising children and they're really upset because they're not, they know their days are numbered. So just keep that in mind. Don't judge them too harshly if they haven't got a boss. It's not their fault. So those girls over there nearly got the short straw, but when I found out they didn't have a queen, then I gave them a little frame of brood. So they're raising a queen cell over there, hopefully, and it'll be all good. I don't know, am I gonna be silly enough to do this? Yep, well, we've got this far, haven't we? I'm just thinking I put all the nukes together and we'll put all the big ones together because then that will be, well, oh, no, it won't bloody matter, will it? It won't matter, John, if you stop, stop procrastinating and just get on with it. <laughs> That's a big word, isn't it? Procrastinating. There's a lot of procrastinating sometimes, isn't there? I might bring them a torch around here before I am silly enough to move anybody. Are we all still in bed, girls? Nobody's out. That's good. I don't think anybody's escaped, so that's good. Oh, are we going to be brave enough to unload them as well? I think we're being silly, but anyway. You wouldn't think it'd take up so much effort to put a bee suit on, would you? You'd be in trouble, Mr. Bush Bee Man. 
I reckon we'll put everybody out before we take the paper out of any of them. <laughs> Don't you reckon? Oh. Oh. These ones are doubles. Oh, you put that one on there, didn't you, Mr. Muscles? Bloody hell. <laughs> Well, so there's our fat tail girls. They're going to have a little bit of a raising here. Hopefully these hives come up nice and strong and then we can take the best queens out of these queens and make some more queens. Next thing you know, we'll have an apiary full of, you know, round tail girl queens.